Hey everybody, Linus here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving deep into the world of two-factor authentication or 2FA, and trust me, this is important stuff. Now, you might be thinking, 2FA is supposed to be super secure, right? And for the most part, you're right, it adds that extra layer of protection to your accounts. But what if I told you that even the most robust 2FA systems have vulnerabilities? Yeah, scary stuff. I'm going to walk you through six common techniques hackers use to bypass 2FA. The goal here isn't to scare you, but to arm you with the knowledge you need to protect yourself online. All right, let's kick things off with a classic attack method, brute force. You see, brute forcing in the context of 2FA often targets systems with weak or non-existent account lockout policies. Imagine this. You've got a website that allows unlimited login attempts. An attacker could write a script that keeps bombarding the login page with different username and password combinations. Now, most sites with 2FA will throttle login attempts after a certain number, right? But what about the password reset function? That's where the vulnerability often lies. Many sites don't apply the same rigorous rate limiting to password resets. So, an attacker could potentially brute force their way through the password reset process, triggering 2FA codes each time. If the system isn't designed to flag this suspicious activity and lock the account, the attacker could eventually hit the right combination and gain access. Think of it like trying to guess the combination to a lock. With enough tries, they might just get lucky. That's why it's crucial to have strong account lockout policies in place. These policies should limit the number of incorrect login attempts and password reset requests from a single IP address within a specific time frame. Let's face it, sometimes the weakest link in the security chain isn't a piece of software or a complex algorithm, it's us, humans. And that's where social engineering comes in. This technique relies on manipulating people into giving up sensitive information, often through clever psychological tricks. Imagine this. You get a phone call from someone claiming to be from your bank's tech support. They sound professional, they use all the right jargon, and they tell you there's been some suspicious activity on your account. They need to verify your identity to resolve the issue, so they ask for your 2FA code. Sounds pretty convincing, right? But here's the catch. It's a scam. These attackers are masters of deception, preying on people's trust and willingness to help. They might even have some of your personal information gleaned from data breaches or social media to make their story more believable. And it's not just phone calls. Social engineering attacks can come in many forms. Phishing emails fake websites designed to mimic legitimate ones, even direct messages on social media. The goal is always the same, to trick you into handing over your credentials, including those precious 2FA codes. So, how do you protect yourself from becoming a victim of social engineering? First and foremost, be skeptical. Always verify the identity of anyone asking for your personal information, especially if it's over the phone or through an unsolicited email. Legitimate companies will never ask for your passwords or 2FA codes directly. Secondly, pay attention to your gut feeling. If something feels off, it probably is. All right, let's dive into the world of cookies. And no, I'm not talking about the delicious kind. In the digital realm, cookies are small text files that websites store on your computer to remember your preferences and activity. They're generally harmless and make your browsing experience smoother. However, they can also be exploited by attackers to bypass 2FA, specifically through a technique called session hijacking. Here's how it works. Imagine you log into your online banking account, which is protected by 2FA. The website verifies your credentials and issues a session cookie, a unique identifier that tells the server you're logged in and authenticated. This cookie is sent with every subsequent request you make on the site allowing you to navigate between pages without having to re-enter your credentials or 2FA code each time. Now, if an attacker manages to get their hands on your session cookie, they can essentially impersonate you on the website. They don't need to know your password or 2FA code because the stolen cookie already grants them access. But how do attackers steal session cookies? One common method is through a man-in-the-middle attack, where an attacker intercepts the communication between your device and the website server. Another method is through cross-site scripting vulnerabilities, where malicious code is injected into a website, allowing the attacker to steal cookies from unsuspecting users who visit the compromised page. Once they have your cookies, it's game over. They can access your account, make transactions, change your settings, you name it. 
All right, let's talk about algorithms, the mathematical engines that power many two-factor authentication systems. Now, most 2FA methods rely on generating random codes, often using algorithms called pseudo-random number generators, or PRNGs. These algorithms are designed to produce sequences of numbers that appear random, making it difficult for attackers to predict the next 2FA code. However, and this is a big however, no PRNG is truly random. They all rely on a starting point called a seed and a set of rules to generate the sequence. If an attacker can figure out the seed and the algorithm used, they can potentially predict future 2FA codes, effectively bypassing the entire security measure. Think of it like a deck of cards. A well-shuffled deck appears random, but if you know the exact order of the cards before shuffling, you can predict which card will be drawn next. Similarly, if an attacker can reverse engineer the PRNG used by a 2FA system, they can gain a significant advantage. Now, exploiting Parang weaknesses is a highly technical attack, often requiring specialized knowledge and resources. Attackers may target specific implementations of 2FA systems, looking for vulnerabilities in the way they generate random numbers. They might also try to exploit weaknesses in the hardware or software used to generate the seeds. All right, let's talk about SIM swapping, a scary attack that can completely compromise your online accounts, even those protected by 2FA. Now you might be thinking, how can someone swap my SIM card without physically having my phone? Well, it's all about social engineering and exploiting weaknesses in mobile carrier security. Here's the basic premise. An attacker gathers personal information about you, often through phishing, social media scraping, or even buying data from shady online marketplaces. Armed with this information, they contact your mobile carrier, impersonating you and claiming to have lost their SIM card. If the attacker is convincing enough and the carrier's security protocols are lax, they can convince the representative to transfer your phone number to a new SIM card, one that they control. Once they have your number, they can intercept any SMS-based 2FA codes sent to your phone, effectively bypassing the second factor of authentication. Think of it like redirecting your mail. If someone manages to convince the post office to forward your mail to a different address, they can intercept your letters, bills, and even credit card statements. Similarly, SIM swapping gives attackers access to your text messages, including those containing sensitive authentication codes. The scary part is that once an attacker has your phone number, they can potentially reset passwords for other accounts linked to it such as email, social media, or even financial institutions. This can have devastating consequences, leading to identity theft, financial loss, and a whole lot of headaches. So, how do you protect yourself from SIM swapping? First and foremost, be extremely cautious about the personal information you share online. All right, let's talk about backup codes, those seemingly harmless strings of characters designed to be your lifeline if you ever lose access to your primary 2FA method. They're meant to be a last resort, a safety net to help you regain control of your account. However, in the wrong hands, backup codes can become a backdoor for hackers, granting them easy access to your accounts. Think of it like the spare key to your house. You keep it hidden, safe and sound, just in case you ever lock yourself out. But if a burglar finds your spare key, they can waltz right in without having to pick the lock or break a window. Similarly, if an attacker gets their hands on your backup codes, they can bypass your primary 2FA method and access your account as if they were you. But how do attackers steal backup codes? One common method is through phishing attacks. They might send you an email disguised as a legitimate communication from a service you use, tricking you into clicking a link that leads to a fake website designed to steal your credentials, including your backup codes. Another method is through malware infections. Malicious software can be designed to steal data from your computer, including saved passwords, browsing history, and yes, even backup codes. Once installed, these programs can operate silently in the background, siphoning off your data without your knowledge. So how do you protect yourself? First and foremost, treat your backup codes with the same level of care and attention as your primary passwords. Never store them on your computer or even worse, write them down on a sticky note attached to your monitor. Consider using a password manager to generate and store your backup codes securely. So there you have it, the top six ways hackers can bypass even the most secure 2FA systems. It can seem scary, but remember, knowledge is power. 
By understanding these threats, you're already one step ahead in protecting yourself. While no security system is foolproof, being aware of these vulnerabilities helps you make smarter choices online. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button and share it with your friends. Let's spread awareness about cybersecurity. Stay safe out there.